This video will show you how to turn text containing values delimited by commas into a list of strings containing the values. For example, the following text contains three values. Note the spaces are part of the values but not the commas themselves. We can use partition enclosed to cut at the commas. Partition enclosed requires a Boolean vector to the left showing where to cut. For example, here we have ABC and DE. Let's use the user command disp uh, to better see the result. Let's display the arguments on top of each other to better see what's happening here. You can see here the one starts over the A and there's another one starting over the D. This tells partition and close where to cut. So A, B, C are part of the first section and then DE. Let's create a cutting vector for our text. Because partition and close starts cutting at the first one, we need to add a one before the cutting boolean vector to include the first item. Let's have a look at this. As you can see, the comma is part of the result, but we don't have the first value because cut doesn't start with a one. So value two and value three are there, but the section to the left of the one is not found. That's the way partition and close work. So let's add a one. But now the lengths are different. The length of the text doesn't match the length of the cut, and so APL complains. Let's just add a character in front of text, and the length should be the same. See, if we now display cutting the text that includes the extra character at the beginning, we get this. Now we need to remove the commas. So we simply do a one drop on each one of the elements. That looks better. Now let's write a function to do that work. Here is the function split. Here we see that the first thing it does is add a comma in front of our right argument. That gives us the string. Then we define the cutting vector, which is everywhere where we have a comma. And of course, there's one at the beginning, so it will start cutting there. And finally, we cut and we drop the comma, the first character, in front of each string. Let's try it. Excellent. Now, most often, text will come in as a series of lines. For example, here is a CSV file, a comma separated value file, where each line contains items separated by a comma. We can see that the first line contains a surname, name, and age. The second line contains Dan, Druff, and 34, and so on. What we would like to do here is to cut each one of those items on separate lines and separate columns. So we should get a 6 by 3 array of strings. Now let's edit data, which should contain the text. And I've already done the copy, so we have all our data into this variable called data. Now let's run the function on data and display the result. And as you can see, it did not work because there are lines delimited by a new line character. It's not the comma, it's a new line character that goes between here we see age and Dan, 34 and Holly. 21 and Al, and so on. So we need something different. We need to cut also on the new line character, which happens to be the Unicode character point 13. First thing we do is we make sure that our text starts with a new line character. Then we count the number of lines. Then we find where to cut the text. We use for this the function membership. The left argument is the CSV data. And the right argument is the elements we want to cut on. Here we have the new line character, or carriage return, and the comma. Then we cut and remove the delimiter. Then we find the number of columns. Then we display our result with the number of lines and number of columns. We can now write a function that will take the CSV text and return a matrix of enclosed strings. I have already written the function. Here it is. Let's put the line numbers in there. As you can see on line 3, I define the carriage return, or new line character, on line 6, I add the carriage return in front of our text. On line 8, I count the number of lines. On line 10, I find a cutting vector. On line 12, I cut and remove the comma on each one. On line 14, I find the number of columns. And finally, on line 16, I reshape the data to match the original. Let's try it. Perfect. This function should work, except in the case where the data itself includes commas. What's to do then? 
Well, when this happens, the trick is to surround the text containing a comma with a special character, usually double quote, like this. We need to mask out the second and the third commas. Those two there. The mask should look like this. We can use different scan for this. It has the property we want, that is flipping between ones and zeros at each one it encounters. So as you can see here, there's a one here, and right after that, we see a series of one. As soon as it hits the second one, it turns into a zero. So it hits the third one, turns into one. It hits the fourth one into a zero, and etc. We can check where the double quotes are and use different scan to generate the mask. So the text is equal to double quote and different scan. Now if we look at the text and where the mask happens to be a one, we can see that the mask tells us exactly where the text is between double quotes. Now, since we want to know where there is no text, we have to negate the mask to find out where the commas we want to deal with, we want to cut, are. Now, we can also use equal scan, which has the reverse property, which is to flip between zeros and one at each zero. In this case, what it does is exactly what we want. Either way, we get the mask we want. We can negate the first one, we can do negate different scan of text equal double quote or we can do equal scan text different than double quote either way we get the same result we can now use it to cut making sure that it includes our mask if we display the cut of the text we can see now that the second value includes the commas it also includes the double quotes and we'll deal with that in a second. If we now remove the first comma and the double quotes, everything is fine. Here's another function, which now accounts for the double quotes in the text. As you can see, I still have the carriage return on line four, which I append on line seven in front of the text. I still count the number of lines, but now at line 11, I find the mask and I use it on line 12 to be included when I cut to find the cutting vector. And then the rest is the same. I cut on the vector and remove the commas. Line 16, I find the number of columns. And line 18, I reshape the data, making sure that I remove all the double quotes in the text. Let's look at some other data here. This one has four rows, three columns. And as you can see here, some of the text is surrounded by double quotes because they include comma. Some of the text also has double quotes even though it doesn't have any comma, but that doesn't change anything. So let's try it. Seems to be working. Excellent. I hope you have enjoyed this. See you next time.